Today we're talking about kickboxing combos that actually work. But before we get to the top five that I think you absolutely need to know to be able to just let a combo rip and have something land, before we get to that, well, we're gonna roll the intro, and then we're gonna talk about my issue with thinking specific combos always work and why it's a bit of a danger. But still, overall, you will leave this episode with some awesome combos that are gonna help you land more strikes in sparring or your fights. Before we get to the five kickboxing combos which you do want to learn, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this episode, X Marshall. These guys have so much gear on their website. I've been trying out so much of it and I'm so happy. The apparel has been top notch. I've been putting it through the ringer, taking it to my jujitsu classes, taking it for sparring sessions, and it's just holding up so well. It feels fantastic. Shin pads, I've been using their shin pads putting them again through the grinder, kicking the bag with them to see how they hold up. Beautiful. You guys can head over to xmarshall.com. Down in the description below, use the promo code Gabriel Varga to save yourself 10%. And let's move on to the rest of the episode. All right, so I promised you I would give you some thoughts on why I don't like having set combos that you think work on the pads, that you constantly throw on the pads, but then you think you're always gonna land in the fight. Let me explain what I mean by this. So if I come into a fight and I go, wow, I had a lot of success with my favorite combo, which I worked on the pad and the bag over and over and over again, I step in and I go jab, cross, body hook, head hook, low kick, cross up or cross, and it just feels so good. But then you go into a fight and you try and execute that combo and midway through you realize, oh, I just got tagged and you've never really dealt with what happens in that scenario, so maybe you just keep trucking forward with your combo. That is not good. Maybe you step in and the guy shells up to the head and you're still throwing to the head because you're executing the combo, which you've done so many times. Again, wasted energy. So what I like to have is some combinations which feel good that I've tried out in sparring and seem to land for me a lot, but to also have the ability to change that combo midway through. Never enter going, this is what I have to throw and I can't do anything else. That is a big mistake. It's gonna mess up your fight game and you're not gonna be as skilled as if you just came forward and went, okay, I threw the jab, his hands are up. Okay, I'm gonna go down to the body. Now I'm gonna fake to the body and come up to the head. And now, oh, look at his, he's rocked. He's dropped his hands a little bit. Now I'll give three to the head level to try and finish him. Reactionary is far, far better. But still, there are combos in sparring which land for me very often, and we're gonna talk about my five favorite today, which you can drill and drill and drill, and see if they work for you, add them to your arsenal, but just keep in mind everything I just said previously. The first one that we're gonna to touch on, I actually have a name for it, so that when my pad holder calls for it, I can just bust it out. We call it Dutch Boy. Don't ask me why, my pad holder just came up with the name, but it's a very Dutch style combo. We're coming jab, cross, body hook, and then to the right low kick. Jab, cross, body hook, and then to the right low kick. Now I wanna show these combos to you, but then I want to explain why they most likely work, why you will have success with them over other combos. So the first thing, you guys already know, I love my left body hook. When I step in and I come one, two, generally there's an opening down low, tag down to the body. If you land that body shot, this guy is gonna whew, slump over. He's gonna get heavy in his legs and he's gonna have a lot of trouble checking. So when you throw this combo, you're not so much thinking that, okay, the first two are gonna land, but you've gotta put enough power in them that they have a chance of distracting the guy. Whoop, whoop, and then rip down to the body. Now I've wound up so I can unwind my body and smash in that low kick. One more time, jab cross body hook into the low kick. Fantastic Dutch style combo, which we have dubbed Dutch boy. The next combo, which I really, really like throwing and I find lands a lot, is jab cross. Again, we're gonna work off the jab cross fairly often because it's a nice safe way to get in. Then I come to the inside low. From there I drop to another cross and then I come up to head level with the round kick. All the attacks from the legs are off the left side. Again, jab, cross, inside low, cross, 
and then up to the head. What's interesting about this one is there's no skipping involved. We need to recognize that if we can punch the guy, we can kick them with that lead leg. So note, no skip, one, two, fade back, come to the punch, fade back again, so that my foot lands exactly where my hand would be. This one works so well because of the level changes. I come straight, straight, distract the guy, little fade back, catch him to the inside. As I fall forward, I hit him again. And now if he gets closed off, he closes his guard. From here, as I lean back, I can often catch people to the side of the head. A little bit faster for you. One, two, three, four, five. Again, one, two, three, four, five. I like this one, it works. Test it out. The next kickboxing combo I wanna work is something which has actually worked on me more than I've landed on other people, but I do try and execute it, and it does work pretty well in sparring now. What we're gonna do from out of range is fake a jab. This is just a closing distance thing. The guy's over here, I can't quite get to them with my jab, but I just toss it out to distract them. Toss, I close the distance, cross, upper, cross, then I switch to my left leg. Now the trick here, is the next technique. When you batter somebody with a round kick off the arm, generally they're gonna sink down and they get pretty heavy. And they're not expecting another round kick, especially not with a level switch. And we're gonna come and attack the inside of the lead leg. So I close the distance, whoop, fake, cross up or cross, trying to land all those, quick switch, and then blast through to the thigh. The number of times I fought, or sorry, trained with southpaws who would stand there and wait and crash the kick in. It's been many, I've done this many times and I got really good at blocking. And then they started, got, started getting smart and they started going one and then battering the inside of my leg, which made it very difficult for me to get counters off. So I recognized that this is something that I can use. I started adding it in and this combo probably will work very well for you. Fake, cross, upper, cross, up to the body and down to the leg. A Little bit more difficult, a little bit longer, especially with that little fake at the beginning before you close that distance, but it's one you want to try out. If you want to eliminate the hands from it, that's fine too. You can just switch, or if you're a southpaw, just kick off your back leg, come one, and then right down to the inside low. I think you will find that your opponents are gonna have trouble going from a cross block or a check to the inside check. It's very difficult to do. The next combo we're gonna talk about is setting up that right high kick. Something that's worked for me many, many times is landing this right high kick after the cross. But how do we set it up beforehand if we wanna actually throw a full combo together? Well, this one's fast and simple. I step in, head off the center line, I throw my jab, my lead hook, distracting the guy over here, trying to create an opening, try to land my cross, but not hard. If the cross even glances, most likely the guy's gonna close off, and then I come with my right high kick. Jab, left hook, cross into the right high kick. The timing on this is what is so important. If you have that beat, one, two, three, four, boom, 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 the high kick is probably not gonna land. The beat is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the round kick comes very fast after the cross, and the cross is just more of me sort of touching out. One, two, I give extra power on that hook. Boom, boom, bam, bang. And it works. So many times in sparring where I've had to pull that right high round kick because I know if I just let it breeze through, I'm taking somebody's head off and I'm gonna be concussing somebody in the gym. I don't like to do that. So very often what I'll do is I'll just go one, two, three, and I'll just place it. Or I'll come in and I'll have to drag it down and just make sure I don't follow through. But again, jab, head off the center line, hook, lean into the cross. You can even leave that out there as a blinder. One, two, three and throw that round kick so they do not see it coming. The last combo I wanna give you today is a little mix up of straight punches, a front kick, and a knee. Getting the lead leg going on a knee for me feels fantastic. I feel like many people can use this very well but just don't because they don't have a good setup for it. So I start off and I just go really long arms, not really trying to hit this guy hard but just give him something to think about. Jab, cross, jab, teep, and then from there, I throw my jab, I switch my feet, and I close the distance from my knee. 
jab, cross, jab, front kick, jab, throw the knee. Again, one, two, three, front kick, jab, throw the knee. If you're more advanced, the skip comes off the second jab, or the third jab, I guess, because you have jab, jab, front kick, and then here I switch. So I'm within range. If you want to keep it a little bit more simple, one, two, three, front kick, jab, and then switch on the knee. This one works so well for me because those punches are such distractions. If you hit them with one, two, three, and you land this, and then you throw the other one, but you close the distance, even if they go to catch, because they think, oh shoot, second front kick, well, that's okay, because you're coming with a knee, and you're not gonna catch a knee. And if the guy even gets his arm down there and tries to parry it, he's still gonna get hit with a big old bone. So jab, cross, jab, front kick, into the jab, to the knee, one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one is beautiful. I don't know why it works so well for me in particular. Maybe it will for everybody else out there. Like I said at the beginning of the episode, guys, these are five combos, which I like, which work for me very often in sparring. Doesn't mean they're gonna necessarily work for you, but I think some of them, like jab, cross, body hook to the low kick, works for a lot of people. That's why most gyms just drill that over and over and over. But don't get too caught up on these, like you have to throw them. The last combo we just did, if I went one, two, three, I threw the front kick and I come to the jab and I notice this guy's like really shelled up, then I'll transition it to a round kick instead of a knee. Jab, cross, jab, front kick, jab, maybe I'll come to the right side. Jab, cross, jab, front kick, jab, maybe I wanna come off the back knee. There's so many ways to tweak these to make them your own so they really work and then so you can adjust in the moment. Anyway, those are my five kickboxing combos for you that actually work very well, which you should actually practice and try to learn. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please give the video a like. If you have not already, join the channel, get subscribed. Be sure to check out xmarshall.com in the description down below to pick up your next order of gear. As always, guys, train hard. I will see you back here soon for another episode.